Hello and a warm welcome to Kashmir Times, the platform that gets you neutral news, the platform that holds power to account, the platform that asks tough questions. You all know that Pegasus scandal erupted on 18th of July, and we have entered into the last week of the monsoon session of parliament, and still no one knows how Pegasus has, uh, has happened. Government is not ready for a discussion. Opposition has been raising voice. There has been a constant din, and the government looks like it's in a complete gridlock over demands for a special probe into Pegasus. What's actually happening? Joining me today is M.K. Venu, who is uh, the founder editor of The Wire, which is the Indian media outlet, which was part of the International Media Consortium behind exposing this Pegasus snoot gate. I welcome you, Venu, on Kashmir Times. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good, first, good to be uh, with you. <laughs> same here, Venu. My first question actually is that we all were expecting that probably the government will bend down, will agree for a discussion, but it just seems that from day one till today, we are seeing that for government, this looks like a non-issue. Actually, Nilu, I, I, I wouldn't say uh, that they are treating this as a non-issue because I see a lot of nervousness within the government. Uh, okay. Basically, I'll give you two, three, uh, uh, two, three indicators of, uh, of this. Mm -hmm. In normal circumstances, if they, if the government had really thought that there was nothing in it, they would have found some way of, uh, you know, some committee, some inquiry, or some even uh, so, some kind of, uh, you know, s some inquiry they would have set up, uh, mm -hmm. even if, even if that inquiry were uh, a very token one, right? So, uh, you know, you know, this government has ways of. Uh, managing uh, dealing with inquiries right so, so so they now the the surprising thing about uh, nilu the government is that they have maintained radio silence uh, mm. as you said it, it started on uh, uh, july 18 the parliament opened and uh, now it's nearly two weeks more than two weeks of parliament uh, completely uh, in a in a shutdown mode because mm. of this issue uh, largely because of the issue government is is in government is observing complete silence and uh, not saying anything uh, in regard to certain basic facts you know about the about the pegasus case now one basic very minimal uh, statement from the government that everybody was expecting was whether you have whether you bought pegasus services or not from the israeli company right now, now this is now this is a very simple fact which the by now the government should have clarified. No, for a moment one even if one grants uh, this to the government that that you that that you have not used Pegasus, uh, they claim that they have not used it. But uh, to me, the most more surprising part is they are totally silent on whether they they bought Pegasus or not. And one of their ministers uh, said on Parliament. Uh, very nonchalantly that uh, so what is the big deal about having pegasus that does not prove anything 40 countries have pegasus so why don't you say that you have pegasus if 40 countries have pe pegasus why don't you say it so they are shying away from even admitting that and i think that is a key one of the first prayers of uh, that petition filed by Enram and shashi kumar you know veteran uh, journalist former editor of uh, hindu right. chairman of hindu that first prayer is uh, to the supreme court is please get the government to tell us whether they have Pegasus or not. You know, whether you use it or all is a, is a secondary issue. We can we can go into that. Mm. So, and for me, this is most puzzling because, Nilu, because world over, everybody is now, all democracies have written to Israeli government. They, you know, the French president has uh, written to them. Um, Israel itself has raided that company, NSO, which, which supplies Pegasus to only governments, vetted government. Mm. They, they, the, the Israeli company has even announced suspension of Pegasus services. So, such is the level of, of response. I'm saying from from the gov from the government where it, it originated, the country, government of the country, and the US has also written to them. 
Right. Everybody has written to them, but but radio silence from Mr. Modi. Now the question is why is why is our government keeping quiet? I mean, they are almost appearing as if they are partners of Pegasus. You know that they can't say a word about NSO, the company which owns Pegasus. For the, I, I even for a moment I grant that uh, you take them at face value when they say they have not done anything. They have not uh, used. Uh, they are not saying they are not used Pegasus. They are neither denying that. They have Pegasus, nor are they accepting they have Pegasus. Now, th that's a separate issue. That's that's what the Supreme Court needs to go into. Uh, they, the government uh, has, uh, uh, the government could have at least, you know, made a, a a broader statement at the global level that 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 such a uh, such a large scale use of the spyware, uh, which in the case of France, India has great relations with France, right? It has been used to to hack into uh, the Macron's. Uh, office so at, at least government could make a statement uh, expressing uh, expressing some some sort of you know solidarity with other democracy uh, you know so, so 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 that's what is puzzling to me this radio silence on the part of the government but you not saying that, anything at all yeah, but you think that uh, this radio silence as uh, put by you is nailing the government further and uh, in fact nailing them more painfully even before they give answers yeah, in the yeah, they are, uh, yeah i think they uh, Nilu, unfortunately they have in my view they have painted themselves into a corner by not answering as i said i began with basic facts do you have pegasus or not they've not answered that right now then somebody else will have uh, will force them to answer it it could be the supreme court it could be anybody uh, you know there is a there is a case uh, reporters sans frontiers filed the case in paris also on friday of which Siddharth Vardarajan and I, uh, uh, since both of us are uh, were uh, proven to be uh, infected, our phones. <laughs> so they've invited us. So we've also become uh, a party to that case. Now, now I've always held, Nilu, that this is a global issue. This is an assault on global democracies, institutions, you know, uh, human rights, global right to privacy is associated with right to doing your own thing, your business. These days, mobile is used to conduct everything you know by doctors conduct their business on mobile Absolutely. you know financial services guys journalists much more so because all our contacts all our documents are, are on a mobile so so this is a, is a it's an it's an assault on uh, whatever privacy and and democracy on a different scale so that's why there is a global reaction but we know and this, i'm surprised this, right there's one so, argument so, uh, what i'm saying is that uh, okay, so, you so today, point. Yeah. I, 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 I'm saying that at some point, you know, uh, to answer your question, that somebody in the government, some retired official will come out and say, yes, we had Pegasus or we used Pegasus uh, in 2018 or 2019. In my view, this is inevitable because, because stating this truth is not violating official secrets act. Right. right. So you can't say that that. That admitting that we had Pegasus official secrets uh, is covered by official so, secrets act. I guess we'll have to wait and uh, watch who that one retired official would be who would be ready to uh, say whether they bought over the Pegasus or not. But my question to you was uh, what I was wanting to ask you, Vena, was that one constant argument which comes on the part of the government and every day on media channels, there is one argument which says that, you know, uh, we, they, they just don't want to accept the fact that, you know, whether uh, they bought over the Pegasus or not, they are not even ready to acknowledge that there is a problem like this. There is, they are not ready to even accept that, you know, a spyware can be harmful for the prime minister himself. So if a government like this, I mean, who, who with a government which is living in a complete denial mode, which is not even acknowledging the problem, unlike other countries have done, uh, where do you see the matter headed to? Do you think that the judiciary will be able to uh, really find out the truth and will force the government to answer these questions? I think judiciary will find out something. Uh, this time, I'm certain that the Supreme Court uh, would... See, the. I, I think the Supreme Court will try to at least get at this truth about whether Pegasus was used or not, whether, this, whether these services were uh, taken from the Israeli company or not. Now, th there, is the, there is another aspect to this, uh, uh, Nilu. This, in the case of France, for instance, Morocco has turned out to be the culprit, which, which apparently 
hacked into uh, the the phones of uh, the of macaron and and uh, possibly his associates etc now th- th- there is a sense of shock there right so that's why they wrote to the israeli company and israeli government uh, fr- the french uh, authorities wrote and they uh, and there was a uh, two way exchange now uh, in india's case it, as uh, the hindustan times editorial uh, pointed out some time ago and hd by the way is not a it's not a great crusading uh, anti establishment <laughs> newspaper it said that if it is not if it is not our government then then it could be some other government because only governments are accessing this if it is some other government it is an even bigger and a more serious uh, uh, issue mm-hmm. that means we have we have we've been subjected to some cyber attack by some some uh, some enemy nation you know so so there what you said they could be doing it to the prime minister so uh, they could be doing it to anybody you know so right. so that is the seriousness of this uh, so that is why i am totally puzzled at the uh, at the reaction uh, or lack of reaction of this uh, of this government all initially the government, the government tried to uh, uh, all the spokes i, I the also government. want to say here yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no i also oh, want yeah. to say you know here that initially they tried to discredit the whole uh, global investigation by saying oh uh, these are just uh, some names in a database and uh, and how many have been tested so then we we told them that out of 50 uh, out of sorry 20 phones The, that were tested 10 have proved to be infected so there is a 50% strike rate mm. which is something that even snowden has pointed out mm. so then they said oh but oh, what is the guarantee what is the uh, authenticity of the authenticity of the testing facility then the french government authenticated uh, if you remember three journalists french government uh, uh, indi- government's independent probe by its cyber security uh, unit it corroborated the the, the same three uh, f- french journalists phone getting infected so that independent corroboration uh, uh, corroboration actually made things even more difficult for our our government because after that they've now in the last few days they've stopped saying that this is fake initially if you remember they were calling it fake and uh, right. not to be t- taken no, note of at all but now what's surprising is that on every day on the prime time channels whenever is uh, whenever uh, pegasus is being discussed one thing which the bjp spokespersons are saying is that all these people who are so called the infected people or whose phones have got infected why don't they submit their phones to the police for a formal as as a formal complaint and why a formal complaint is not being lodged why a criminal complaint has not been lodged so that is how they are taking the issue or rather digressing the issue if i if i may say actually this uh, nilu this this question was in the first hearing of the supreme court uh, this question was discussed and uh, the the senior advocate uh, uh, who on behalf of enram and the other petitions uh, very clearly told the judge uh, the chief justice that this this is not an individual uh, violation of some individual it is a it, it's a violation of an individual's privacy and the, there are criminal lawyers who have said that if if individuals can go to the police and uh, and file a complaint against the illegal hacking of the phones mm. but the argument made to the supreme court was that people are going to the supreme court because they are invoking fundamental rights they are invoking article article you know uh, article 19 to 21 you know uh, so it's a much broader uh, a, a kind of a much broader intervention people are seeking uh from the supreme court because this has this has targeted all democratic institutions when you take the election commission which is supreme court the registry you know the what have you the opposition leaders uh, uh, so journalists uh, civil society activists activists to so not strictly a, a criminal case although a criminal case would lie right so so that is the argument so we uh, you can either approach it uh, individuals can go and ask for a criminal investigation uh or a collective of whatever journalists and others can go and ask for uh, the supreme court to intervene uh, uh, and reinforce their their basic fundamental rights which are getting violated here, right so so the two are uh, the two can run parallelly also but i think uh, the supreme court intervention in my view is much more important uh, uh, as of as of now uh, later if individuals want to go they can go but uh, you know how the uh, Uh, i mean so you you have actually listed out the main problem today on record <laughs> but uh, yeah, we know but one thing which which really makes one ponder is that if you look at the covid pandemic 
it brought out the societal and the economic ills, you know, through which people went and how country did not support them. But if you look at this loop gate, the way Pegasus was exposed and what it has done to so many people, be it the journalists, lawyers, uh, people sitting in the constitutional post, judiciary, the way they have been impacted, do you think that it's like a never before seen kind of a moment and a kind of a complete inversion of democracy, like the way we have never seen? Yeah, the, you know, the scale and the, the, the width of the coverage of this uh, spyware is uh, you know it's 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 unprecedented. It is stunning in its in its coverage. In the past, we've had telephone interception, whether during Rajiv Gandhi's time when Chandrasekhar was prime minister, uh, Indira Gandhi was prime minister, and th those were uh, you know those were the pre-internet uh, era where uh, you know you could uh, you know te technology uh, buffs uh, you know describe that as as a much more passive inter interception where you just uh, and looking at conversations between people, right? Uh, you you tap into the conversations, uh, and then and reach your conclusion as to uh, whatever you get from them. You know, uh, now here in the post-internet era and in the post like uh, smartphone era, and especially iPhone, which is like a veritable, uh, you know, it's like a it's like your office, anybody's office or anybody's uh, instrument for conducting their lives. You know? uh, whether it's buying stuff or whether it's doing the, you know, uh, uh, whether practicing their profession, uh, keeping records. So, so, so I think this, so it's a, it's a whole different ball game now. Uh, so therefore, it's not for nothing that NSO, that company, describes uh, this uh, spyware, this Pegasus um, uh, spyware as a cyber weapon. It's their own description. They call it a cyber weapon. You know? mm -hmm. So, so the question is, how was the cyber weapon used mm -hmm. on? All the uh, people who uh, key people who are uh, who are manning or who are uh, you know uh, monitoring uh, or looking after the institutions of democracy, right? So, so that is the that is the broader question which for, which people have gone to Supreme Court for a for a kind of redressal you know, of right. so. I was uh, going through this biography of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which. Uh, which clearly states one line, which could be used in this uh, Pegasus uh, contest, that you know there is a public life, a private life, and a secret life. So if at all this government has managed to snoop into the lives of the lawyers, the journalists, the judiciary, uh, do you think that the secret lives of the people will be used as weapons for governments like that of Modi or whichever government comes in? And if at all Pegasus continues to be used like this. So secret lives will no more remain a secret life. Well, it's uh, more, than, uh, Nilo, uh, more than secret lives. What, what this is doing is it is compromising your own, your entire democratic processes, right? So if you, if you tap a guy, uh, say, like, uh, I mean, if you tap a if you put a spyware on a guy like uh, Prashant Kishore, who's who's working with all the state regional leaders, who who are challenging the center, right? Uh, whether it's DMK or whether it's uh, TMC, Mamta Banerjee, or whether it's Stalin or whether it's Amrinder Singh, and he is he's closely working with all of them. And and they if 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 all the if this through the spyware if uh, if the BJP. Uh, gets to know all the secrets of uh, or all the strategies uh, uh, being discussed uh, political strategies being discussed uh, before an election i mean what kind of a, what kind of democracy are we are we then uh, living in right so the the you know the, the the line between the party and the government is totally blurred here right so so they're all these the people are being tapped because because BJP uh, wants to uh, keep winning elections, you know they they've established a great election machinery uh, through various means. Uh, one had thought uh, that uh, uh, if this if, if indeed this is being used, if it is proven that it's being used, then this will become the most uh, this will become the most lethal uh, part of their election winning machinery. You know, <laughs> much Absolutely. more than money, muscle, or or, 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 uh, or their whatever the, the usual uh, 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 you know methods uh, with which you win people's uh, you know, Pegasus, support popularity. Pegasus actually becomes then an official vehicle for taking away the level playing field. 
completely uh-huh. so, yeah, yeah exactly so that so that is the that is the whole issue so he, unlike so uh, you know the supreme court judge uh, in the last hearing he asked how come people did not come to the court in 2019 when uh, when 121 uh, uh, cases of you know pegasus uh, allegedly pegasus hacked phones was brought to the government's attention by whatsapp itself whatsapp is now based on that incident whatsapp has gone to court against nso uh, yeah. in 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 california right uh, and uh, and the research for that uh, uh, whatsapp uh, the research backup for that case was done by citizen the citizen lab of toronto university uh, under whose protocols even our phones were tested right so the same organization uh, uh, did research to prove at that time so so the answer to that nilu is that in, in that list of 121 there were some journalists there were some you know two or three journalists some activists but the it's 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 sweep uh, in terms of coverage of democratic institutions uh, you know hacking into democratic institutions was not so wide uh, you know at that time there were no judges there were there, there were no supreme court registrars there was no opposition leaders like supreme. rahul gandhi or uh, you know uh, or, or prashant kishore etc so so that is the uh, you know and the, the number of journalists right so uh, so it's it's i mean i'm still reeling from the 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 the, uh, the level of the scale of this operation you know so but if i may ask you uh, towards our last lap of the interview that your phone also was hacked how has it really changed your life now are you carrying like more than four phones do you pick up everybody's calls i really want to know what's happening on your mind because i know as a journalist you're neck deep into writing the stories still for the wire because yeah. everyday exposes are still happening so how has your life changed well i'm a uh, uh, of course it it kind of like everybody else it it created uh, a lot of uh, uh, a sense of insecurity sense of uh, your your private space being invaded the sense of your old mind space being invaded you know uh, all those feelings were were there uh, and uh, there was a i think in the middle of all this uh, uh, iphone sent up uh, sent up uh, an ios you know they keep sending these uh, softwares you know uh, one security uh, software they sent and they requested everybody to download it and you know uh, and just uh, uh, put it in their uh, in their uh, in their system so i did that so that kind of gave me some uh, some relief that maybe okay. this uh, this is a security software sent by the iphone may uh, may to some extent counter the uh, the pegasus uh, the spyware if it is still around in my phone uh, but i am i am also reasonably uh, what should i say i'm i'm reasonably optimistic that that when when the israeli government says that that the company or, or when the company says it has suspended temporarily uh, the services to all the countries uh, i think it might have happened because there is so much pressure on them uh, the services have been suspended pending a probe into a larger probe into how this is being abused after all it was only meant to have been used for national security and uh, uh, you know to counter terrorism etc and and as it turns out it's uh, the people on the list are anything but terrorists or or criminals or, uh, <laughs> high criminals you know uh, who threaten the state uh, so to say so i what think you, i think you... some uh, some solution at the global level uh, you know i have m- much more uh, i have much more confidence that something will happen at the at a, at a global level uh, i i don't have much uh, uh, i don't have much faith in our regime taking corrective steps but definitely at the global level okay so you're saying that you do not have faith in uh, in your regime as in in modi government's regime but but i really want to ask i mean I, I i i yeah, i don't have faith I, because they they are still silent you know they no, have not no, said I, anything i quite agree with what you're saying but that's what my question was that why do you see this government being so persistent not listening to anybody they are not bothered about any of the global indexes whether it is the press freedom index whether it's a democracy index they are not even bothered about the way india is being projected globally and all what this government is worried about is that how does modi look in the picture how does modi look in the posters how does bjp project itself uh, what what do you really have to say about this mindset 
of a government like this? I think they they didn't begin like this, Nilu. You know, they began with uh, Modi wanting a, a legacy globally, wanting a big image. If you remember the the way he went to uh, America, the way he went to uh, various other countries with a lot of Indian uh, uh, overseas Indians uh, uh, pre present. You know, uh, big shows about uh, whether it was uh, whatever, whether, whether it was East Asia or whether it was UAE or U US, uh, etc. But in the last two, three, uh, in, after the 2019 elections, uh, mm -hmm. the way they started implementing their, their core, uh, some of their core uh, mandates, uh, which were there in the manifesto, but the manner in which they started implementing, which is the, uh, which is the CA, NRC, you know, the Citizens Amendment Act, NRC combined, uh, uh, you know, and a uh, whole lot of other things, uh, you know, Ram Temple, uh, uh, you know, the way the farm laws uh, were brought. Uh, all these things uh, created a... Uh, and generally, the, the uh, mo most importantly, uh, I mean, this is Kashmir Times, <laughs> 370 uh, write down, right? So the manner in which the th that 370 was uh, written down and the way subsequently all rights uh, was suspended of, of Kashmir, uh, you know, mainstream politicians and other civil society... Uh, activists uh, and uh, and the common people, the way common people in Kashmir suffered internet shutdowns, all these together got the Prime Minister a very bad image abroad. In fact, institutions abroad started uh, you know talking about these things, whether it was UN or whether it was European Parliament or whether it was uh, you know the Religious Freedom Report uh, brought out by the US Congress, you know, uh, <coughs> later accepted by the government. So. So, so it was uh, it, it it was a big setback to the prime minister's image. And uh, after a point, I got the feeling that the PM stopped bothering about uh, about these foreign publications and foreign institutions uh, holding him to account, or at least trying to sort of uh, uh, to caution him, etc. Right? So even Blinken, who visited recently, in very polite terms. He was telling, what was he telling uh, uh, our government that 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 US and India as two big democracies have to further strengthen their uh, democratic, uh, you know, processes rather than you know uh, go backwards. So, 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 so I think now they've reached the stage. Uh, farmer protests, for instance, had such a huge global backlash. After a point, they again they they. They went into denial. This, the government went into denial, saying that oh, this is just about Punjab, uh, and you know we other farmers are fine. You know? So, uh, so they went into denial there also. Uh, similarly, so now they've reached a point where, in my view, they just seem to think uh, even this Pegasus. Uh, if you talk to BJP spokespersons and all, they'll say, oh, this this doesn't impact. This only impacts the middle class and the, the so-called elites. Uh, you know the voter, the ordinary voter. Uh, you know the, uh, the the real voter in UP, uh, Madhya Pradesh. We are not bothered about it. So this gives me the impression that they have reached a point where they are only bothered about uh, uh, Modi's popularity being retained in six, seven Hindi-speaking states, where uh, which is where it is true that Modi increased his vote share from uh, by about ten percentage point between twenty fourteen and twenty nineteen. Right. Right. So. Uh, 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 largely, I mean, 10 percentage points from Vajpayee's time, but uh, uh, during between 2014 and 2019, uh, the two general elections, I think he increased uh, his vote share substantially by six, seven uh, percentage points. And most of it, in my view, came from, uh, uh, from you know, non yadav OBCs and Dalits uh, in this whole Hindi uh, region, Heartland region. So I think their focus remains, their political focus now remains on holding on to this uh, this 37 percent vote share that they got in 2019 and uh, much the of new, the in, uh, right but the new lease of life which uh, this united the seemingly united opposition which uh, seems to have got from the pegasus and all the issues clubbed together like ca and rc then uh, 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 fuel hike uh, farm laws and of course now the pegasus do you think that all yeah. these issues if the the opposition can sustain this momentum 
all these issues clubbed together with the united opposition could become like uh, an albatross around modi's neck if i may ask you yeah so my so 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 yeah my assessment is that it will uh, i'll tell you why because at the moment bjp uh, really thinks that that their their core voters are still with them you know uh, it it is very clear from the response uh, to pegasus or response to farm uh, protests you know farm law protest oh this is you know the the normal small farmer is not with them right so fa- small farmer uh, by implication is still with bjp right so which is not true i think western up the jat farmers are very angry if you speak to rakesh tikkad you will get a sense of that <laughs> so so they they seem to think that that nothing will dent their uh, their 37% vote share they got in uh, 2019 which was an increase from whatever 32 in 2014 uh, but that is not in my view that is not true all the other economic issues uh, this oil diesel uh, petrol price hikes and much more than that during modi's tenure uh, in my view this is the most important uh, uh, most important factor which will which will affect bjp in the 24 24 elections never before nilu in a 10 year period have so many people gone back to poverty uh, which is reflected by its various surveys pew survey azim premji institute survey so there is a massive uh, you know uh, 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 you know decline in incomes people uh, who are above poverty line going into poverty line people who are uh, reasonable you know middle income going to lower middle income so there's a there's a huge slip back and this has not happened in my view since 1991 if you take any 10 year period from 1991 this has not happened this level of uh, slipping back uh, of people into poverty and you know uh, lower incomes it has not happened and this this will definitely will uh, play a role uh, whether it's in up election or uh, whether it is in 2024 and of course post covid this is all happened post covid so absolutely and the covid manage, management will also be an issue so i don't think uh, net net i think their their current posture that uh, or posturing that that they would retain their core you know hindu vote base irrespective of anything uh, that people don't want beyond ram temple they don't want <laughs> roti kapda makan it's all uh, it's it's a completely mis- misplaced uh, misplaced assumption i think absolutely and i'm sure people would realize with so many jobs gone people people i'm sure would realize what the government is doing but yes if you ask the government government stays in a denial mode but to you all the credit uh, mk venu for the good work your uh, wire has done we all look up to wire the kind of stories which your platform does so more power to you and thanks for uh, uh, coming for this interview thanks so much thank you thank you nilu yeah this it was pleasure talking to you yeah. same here venu thank you thank you so much bye Thank you.